Next, introduce this concept, okay? We're about to learn so something. So there's a manufacturer, and that could be you. And you could say it's creative too, right? And you're one part of the supply chain. And then somewhere on here is the buyer, the customer. Okay, I'm not mapping the space out. And sometimes there's a middle option here. Somebody will call this the retailer. And I'll explain how this all works. And the retailer could be an agency that's bigger than you. And we'll, ex we'll examine it one way. And we'll examine it, how it applies to creative people. Sorry, I'm just getting my markers out here. I need to wear my smock. I think I need to wear my smock here. Yeah. Okay, so a manufacturer makes something and they need to sell it. Okay, so if we're talking about, uh, say, shampoo or something. Okay. Okay? Shampoo. The manufacturer wants to sell it for $5. Okay, to the retailer. They want to sell it to the retailer because usually the manufacturer, like Procter & Gamble, they don't sell to consumer directly. They don't have customer service. They don't want to display. They don't want to deal with returns. They just want to make a great product, let's just say. Okay, so for the manufacturer to make money, they have to make it for less than $2.50. They need to keep it less than this, okay, because they need to make 50% profit here. Now, if you guys ever watch a show like Shark Tank or uh, Dragon's Den, they always ask these questions of the entrepreneurs. What does it cost? What do you sell it for? And they're looking for this ratio. So if you sell something for $5 and it costs you $4 to manufacture, they're going to say there's not enough profit in there for them. So there has to be usually about 50%. So they sell it to the retailer whenever you go to buy shampoo. And then the retailer buys it for $5, okay? So they bought it for 5 bucks. And how much are they going to sell it to the consumer for? I'm going to guess, you guess? Ten do uh, $12. $10 is the right answer. $10. $10. Just double it, okay? They're going to sell it for $10. And you, the customer, are going to buy it for $10. Everybody clear on this? Yes. So it only costs, costs $2.50 to make. Wow. And what did you pay? I paid 10 Yeah. So to understand this a little bit better, it costs $2.50 to make. Now, if the manufacturer sold this to the retailer with zero profit in mind, how long are they going to stay in business, Ricky? Not very long, Chris. Like a very short amount of time. Yeah. So they add profit. And their profit, in this case, is $2.50. So they're doubling it. They're doubling the price, right? Or the cost. And that's mm -hmm. how they get to that. And so you take this chunk... Right, and then you, you go to the retailer and they add their profit to it. So this is what it costs the retailer, right? It costs them $5, so they add their profit. So they're gonna 2X it too. And then that's the price you, the consumer, pay. So I, I, I hope I haven't lost too many people. I think their eyes are rolling in the back of their head. I guarantee you guys, if you can understand and stick with me just for a little bit while longer, because we're almost done. I only have three more pages here, three more uh, flip charts here. If you can stick with me, if you learn some basic business concepts, one is you'll make more money. You'll sound a lot more credible when you're speaking to your client. And perhaps, and this is like the, probably the biggest benefit, you can actually have a real conversation with them about their business and how doing something may or may, may or may not make sense for their business. Everybody understand that so far? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pretend like you do. Internet, <laughs> I can't really see your talk to you right now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ali, uh, Omar, uh, for saying he's loving this. Okay. So this is the consumer price. So you see there's a disconnect here between price and cost because it includes profit. Now, something interesting is happening. Manufacturers are starting to sell to the customer directly. And we can see this now via Kickstarter campaigns. A manufacturer can bypass the middle person and sell directly to the customer. That benefits two people. You, the customer, can buy a good for less. Let's, let's look at this model here, okay? If the manufacturer goes to customer direct, and this is gonna make a lot of sense in a second, customer direct, okay? They can sell it for, say, $7.50. Previously, the price here was $10. Right? They can sell it to you for $750. They now make originally $250 plus $5. 
They've now doubled their profit. They've doubled this profit now. Okay? And you have saved, how much have you saved, Ricky? 25%. So it costs less for you to buy, and they make more money. This is a win-win situation. A win-win. Okay? I love shampoo. You like this, right? Yeah. Ricky, any questions so far? No, this is really clear. Okay, super clear, everybody? So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is known in the retail world as the double keystone model because it goes out and it goes out again. So they're, they're both marking it up twice. Now, I, I said in a second, it's going to make a lot of sense to you because I'm going to bring this home about creative services. Now, you're saying, Chris, I don't, ma I don't manufacture anything. I'm a creative human being. My product is my creativity and the time that I put into something, right? Is there a model where there is a middle broker, a middle buyer of your services? Yes, there is. So this usually happens when a bigger agency or studio, usually an ad agency or a design studio, probably 30 or more people-ish, they need subcontractors. They need someone to do logo design. Maybe they need somebody to develop the website for them or somebody who can do animation. And so they hire out people and then they determine their cost together and then they go and sell it to the customer, which is the end customer, the end buyer, okay? So if you can have the ability to sidestep the middle person and go sell directly to the customer, you will make more money and they will spend less money. So the middle person for many of you, especially if you're watching this from a developing country, you might be working with Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer, or any one of these other sites. So the software in the middle is brokering the deal and they're taking the money. They're taking the money from you and they're taking the money from you. So what we have to do is we have to learn how to brand ourselves. We have to learn how to market. We have to learn about customer service and sales. But if we do that, we can double our profit. So if you learn this, if you're able to apply from the last 15 minutes of what I've been talking about, you could very well double your income for next year. So we should set aside some time right now. Let's take a moment and say in 2020, what kind of income are you going to make? What I would set your goal as to be double what you did this year. So 2019, let's say you did $50,000 in sales this year. Say next year you do 